something that... But at what that, point does a statute or an executive order become unconstitutional? Is it some a priori determination? It becomes... I mean, what I'm telling you what I'm getting at, and I don't mean okay. any disrespect. Who appointed you to the United States Supreme Court? I was... I, I, I mean, that, that, that determined, isn't it a court of final jurisdiction decides what's constitutional or not? In fact, aren't most acts of Congress presumed to be constitutional? They are presumed, but they're not always constitutional. And, no, of course, I was not on the Supreme Court. And, and I can tell you, Senator, look, we really wrestled over this decision. I personally wrestled over this decision. And it was not one that I took lightly at all. But it was because I took my responsibility seriously I as acting that. attorney I believe general. You, I believe you believe what you're saying. Yes, I'm I do. I'm just trying to un understand this is likely to come up in the future. Well, At what point <clears throat> does an executive order or statute become unconstitutional? When I think it's unconstitutional, mm -hmm. or you think it's unconstitutional, or a court of final jurisdiction says it's unconstitutional? I believe that it is the responsibility of the attorney general if the president asks him or her to do something that he or she believes is unlawful or unconstitutional to say no. I don't believe that there are reasonable legal arguments that are grounded in truth that can be made in defense of his argument that the travel ban was not intended to have an impact, a religious impact, and to disfavor Muslims. So you believe that the arguments made by the lawyers who are, who are now defending the executive order are unreasonable. I believe that the Department of Justice has a responsibility to uphold the law and to always speak the truth, particularly when it's about something as fundamental as this executive order was that, that deals with religious freedom. I, but let me say this. I have tremendous respect for the career men and women of the Department of Justice, including the lawyers in the civil division who were handling this. But their obligation was different than mine. They must make an argument if they can make a reasonable legal argument. As acting attorney general, my responsibility was broader than that. And I had to look beyond the confines of the face of the EO to look at the president's statements and to look at other factors to determine what was the actual intent here. And that's, that was the basis for my decision. And for the record, different travel ban. Yeah, there's a, the first order was right. withdrawn. There's a second one out there. And I appreciate that people of goodwill can have very different views, both on the legality of the order and what I should have done in this scenario. But I do think that it's illustrative of an unexpected moment when the law and conscience intersected and the decision had to be made in a very short period of time. After reviewing the legal challenges and reading cases and, and conferring with the DOJ lawyers, I came to the conclusion that defending the constitutionality of the travel ban would require the Department of Justice to argue that the executive order had nothing to do with religion, that it was not intended to disfavor Muslims. And this was despite the numerous prior statements that had been made by the president and his surrogates regarding his intent to effectuate a Muslim ban. I believed that this would require us to advance a pretext, a defense not grounded in truth. And so I directed the Department of Justice not to defend the ban. Now, I appreciate that some believe that I should have just resigned instead of ordering the department not to defend the travel ban. And, and that's a fair question. I grappled with that all over the weekend and, and during the day on Monday. But I believed then and I believe now that resigning would have protected my personal integrity, but it would not have protected the integrity of the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice is not... DOJ isn't just another law firm, and, and this wasn't just any legal issue. It was about the core founding principle of religious freedom. And I couldn't in good conscience send DOJ lawyers into court to advance an argument that the travel ban was unrelated to religion 
when the evidence of intent reflected that that was not the case. Now, there wasn't much time to make, to examine the weighty constitutional law concepts that were implicated here, nor was there a lot of time to craft the directive that we ultimately issued to the department. But I didn't make this decision just within the 72 hours from the time I learned of the ban until I issued the decision.